In Watcher 22, there is a new approach to creating sequences of various kinds, and in this video, I'm going to focus on one aspect of this, which is Euclidean pattern sequencing. Euclidean sequencing is a simple and fascinating way to quickly create interesting rhythmic patterns that can shift and move over time. It's based on an algorithm created by the Greek mathematician Euclid that's used to determine the common divisor between two integers. Amongst other things, this algorithm can be used to divide a circle into any given number of equally sized segments, which is very useful if you're throwing a pizza party. In the early noughties, an influential academic paper demonstrated how Euclid's algorithm could be used to analyse and describe beat patterns from across the musical world. Since then, there have been a growing number of ways to apply this both in hardware and software, and now Watcher has its own implementation. The attraction of Euclidean sequencing is that there are only three basic parameters you have to deal with, so it's very suited to algorithmic composition in general. The three key parameters are steps, how many steps are going to make up our sequence, fills, how many of the steps are going to play a note, and rotation, which of the steps is going to be the first one of our sequence. In addition to those three parameters, we also have to decide what our time base is, meaning we have to decide what the note duration is going to be for the steps of our sequence. So, for example, if we say each step will be a 16th note, then a 16th step sequence will be one bar long. I've always found it easier to visualise Euclidean sequences as circles, so I'm going to use a graphical Euclidean sequencing software app to show how the basics work before moving on to look at how this all works in Watcher. So let's begin there. I should just say that this app uses the term pulse to describe what I call fills. It's different words but it's the same thing. Now here is a visual representation of a very basic Euclidean sequence. We've got a step value of 16 and a fill value of 4. The Euclidean algorithm distributes the fill equally across the steps so that gives us a basic four on the floor beat. If we increase the fill value to eight, we get a double time beat. And if we fill an odd number of steps, it starts to sound syncopated. I'll take it back to four beats as a reference and add another sequence playing the same pattern. Now this is where the rotation of the patterns come into play. As it is, both patterns are playing the same thing at the same time, but if we rotate the second sequence so it starts two steps after the first, we get a simple backbeat. And then if we change the fill value, the beat gets busier and more complex. And if we then change the step number, our sequences now have a shifting phase relationship, which gives you that instant Steve Reich vibe. And this really is all you need to know about how Euclidean sequencing works. So let's now shift to Watcher to see how it's implemented there. And here we are. I've set up the same basic sequence to act as a click track. As you can see, We've got a step length of 16, a fill value of 4, and no rotation. Down here, we set the duration of each step of the sequence in Watcher's usual time base format. So, a 16th note consists of 15 beat ticks. Where appropriate, you can also see a reminder of the note value that corresponds to the number of ticks you've selected. I'll cover the pitch parameters and strategies later, but for now we'll stick to the basic Euclidean parameters. At the top of the editor, you get a readout and a visual reminder of how the defined sequence will play out. So, as you can see, we've got four notes evenly distributed across the 16 steps. But, this being Watcher, 
but are some other useful parameters to play with. For each of the big three parameters, we have a range slider. How this works is, at the end of each iteration of the sequence, Watcher looks at the range values and adds them to the set value. So if we set a fill range of, say, 2, then at the end of the sequence, Watcher will roll the dice and add 1, 2 or 0 to the set fill value before starting the next cycle of the sequence. Meaning that we can morph and shift the sequence around the set value of the core sequence. And this is quite different from the morph parameter in Watcher's other sequence type voices because in those cases the morph results accumulate so you'll move further and further away from the starting pattern as time goes by. Here it's always possible that the sequence will play out as originally defined. So you can in effect take rhythms off for a walk without them losing their musical coherence. You'll also notice there is a repeats value that also has a range. The repeats value only comes into play when you have set a range for any of the other big three parameters. If there's no change in that trio of parameters, then the repeat value has no meaning. But if you set a range for one or more of the three parameters, then the repeat value determines how many times the modified sequence will repeat itself before Watcher rolls the range dice again. So if repeats is set to four, then once the sequence changes, it will repeat itself four times before refreshing itself. And in true Watcher spirit, that value can be made fuzzy by setting a range for the repeats. So let's hit play and check out our click track. As in the other example, changing the fill and the step values changes the nature of the sequence. And the readout at the top shows you what the changes mean in text and graphical terms. Now let's add another sequence. Here we've got an odd number of steps with an 8th fill and a rotation of 2. Let's add a fill range to this and hopefully you'll hear it change on each cycle of the sequence. It's probably worth saying at this point that you really don't have to go wild to get interesting results. Just adding a modest range added to one of the three parameters is plenty to get beat shifting and moving without them becoming incoherent or ragged. And if we add another sequence, our beat gets even more involved. And hopefully you can see the possibilities that open up once you start to layer up sequences like this and the complexity you can achieve with just three basic parameters. OK, let's move on now to look at melodic Euclidean sequencing. The principle is identical to creating beat patterns. It's simply that this time, rather than playing drum voices with the rhythms we create, here we're applying those rhythmic patterns to melodic voices. And there are three options for doing this. The default option is to play a fixed MIDI pitch. So here is our four on the floor sequence playing out just on middle C. We can, of course, change the range of our fixed pitch. If we do that, then the note value is recalculated in every step of the sequence, like this. You can also change the rhythm strategy. The built-in default plays each step in sequence at a rate determined by the step duration, 16th notes in our case. But, if we change it to use the generator's rhythm rule, then each individual step in the sequence is picked at random from the generator's rhythm rule. Now this has a lot of interesting creative possibilities, but you do need to bear in mind that the length of each step, whether it's filled or whether it's a rest, is decided on an individual basis. Which means, if the rhythm rule allows it, it's quite possible for individual steps to last for a full bar. 
So the outcomes here are very different from the way a standard rhythmic generator behaves. Because that generator composes groups of notes in phrases. Composing a sequence one step at a time like this can result in a lot of silences. And a 16 step sequence can play out over tens of bars. So you need to remember that selecting this option will not make your sequence sound like a typical rhythmic generator line. So, switching back to the built-in strategy, the next option is to quantize your sequence steps to the current scale rule. This time, when you set the note range value, you will only get notes that are in the generator's current scale rule, so the results are rather less chromatic than just picking out notes at random, as we were doing before. And finally, there is the option to let the generator compose the notes in the usual way. This is useful because you no longer have to set a range of values, that's determined by the generator's pitch range setting, and it also means that harmony and next note rules are observed, so your sequence is more likely to work harmonically with lines from other generators. Of course, with Euclidean sequences, the sequence use percentage option works in the usual way, Unlike any other sequence type, you can define more than one sequence for a single generator. And once you've defined a list of multiple sequences, you can weight them, so that some are more likely to be chosen than others. Now this is a really valuable alternative to using the range sliders when defining a pattern. Say, for example, you want to have a Euclidean sequence that varies between a fill value of 3 and a fill value of 7. If you set the fill to 3 and the fill range slider to 4, you will possibly get fills of 3 and 7, but you'll also possibly get fills of 4, 5 and 6 on the way as well. But if you define two sequences, with one having a fill of just 3 and the other having a fill of just 7, and leave the fill ranges at 0, you will only ever get one of those two options playing out. So there you have it, a brand new option for creating quite compelling rhythmic and melodic lines. It's quite possible to create a complete piece just using Euclidean sequencing. So, as they say, I'll play out with one I made earlier. Have fun.